House and Senate members taking sharply different steps to temporarily fund the government as the shutdown deadline fast approaches. Today, the House is voting on whether to advance four spending bills for the Departments of Defense, State, Homeland Security, and Agriculture. Meanwhile, senators are preparing and poised to vote on their own bipartisan stopgap plan this week. While President Biden is blaming extreme House Republicans on the impasse, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is blaming the president. Let's listen. I'm prepared to do my part, but the Republicans in the House of Representatives refuse. They refuse to stand up to the extremists in their party. So now everyone in America could be forced to pay the price. The president can really come down to this and make sure government stays open. All he has to do takes some action on the border to secure it. We're going to pass the CR that deals with it. He can say he wants to do something with it. I'll join with him and we'll keep government open and we'll finish out the rest of that. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me now from Capitol Hill. As you see, he's joined by Republican Congressman Mark Molinaro, who represents New York's 19th congressional district. Scott, what's the latest? Well, we are getting close to a deadline, a deadline that has pain in the number of furloughs of federal workers, the number of paychecks that get canceled, and possible delays and backlogs processing visas, passports, veterans' benefits. Congressman Mark Molinaro, New York's 19th district, is in the room having discussions with leadership. We know we have these votes today on four spending bills that the Senate's not likely to take up or pass, the president's not likely to sign. How does passing those four bills get closer to ending a shutdown? Well, I, I know the position is to focus only on the House, but keep in mind, whatever the Senate passes needs to obviously be agreed to by the House as well. So we're both in the same boat need to recognize we have a bipartisan government, we need a bipartisan solution. But we've worked these last few days uh, to move those four appropriations bills today. Uh, we're hopeful that we have the votes. We think that we may uh, and do, but, but success you know, breed success. And just when uh, folks say the House Republican majority can't do something, we end up doing it. It's how we have the energy policy that we adopted to drive down energy costs. It's, it's how we adopted a national defense policy that, that provides the, the largest uh, pay raise for, for service members in generations. And it's how we push back uh, on the wasteful spending that, uh, that we've seen uh, from this president over the last couple of years. It sounds like what they call in Vegas a, a, a parlay, where you, you get this passed, then you try to make your next gambit, which is to then convince these Republicans who have been holding out on these appropriations bills or these rules to approve a short-term spending deal to keep the lights on, something that they seem to have unequivocally opposed. How do you get them to change their minds inside your party? Well, first, we spend a lot of time listening, which I've, I've done. And, and, and but, but here's the thing. What they and we want is the strongest, most conservative message we can send to the president and Senate, that we want to put our best foot forward, that this government spends too much money, is borrowing away our future. We need to rein in the size, scale, and scope of the federal government. As we do that, we think that we also garner support for continuing to do that, adopt these appropriations bills, move forward with a short-term funding mechanism that allow us to adopt the next set of uh, appropriations bills. All of it criti critically important. Remember, when, when the Democrats controlled both houses of Congress and the, and the White House, trillions of dollars were spent, uh, pushed into this economy that fueled inflation. We're saying that you need to right-size the federal government, demand efficiency, and focus on border security. Ultimately, to keep the lights on, to prevent the shutdown, there has to be some bill Democrats will support either in the Senate and in the House as well. Can Kevin McCarthy put that bill on the floor and not have him move to lose his speakership? I don't think any of our conversations have to do with uh, a, a motion to vacate. Uh, um, but that's I do, not coming up in the negotiating room. I, listen, there are people who say it, and certainly that's a, uh, that's a conversation point. But that's but we've been having really earnest dialogue about how do we build the consensus to send this conservative message forward? How do you rein in federal spending, confront a national debt, and secure the border? And what we saw, by the way, is the Senate now talking about maybe a shorter term, maybe a cleaner, if you will, uh, CR that focuses uh, a little bit more, may have more likely to pass the, likely to pass the House. But, but I would say I, I challenge any Democrat in the House or Senate or the President to tell us why we can't uh, move these appropriations bills, adopt a short-term uh, uh, funding mechanism to ensure we can keep the work going, and not do border security. We have to include border security. Which is a part of the House spending bills. But lastly, if the Senate comes through with some short-term deal just to keep the negotiations going, are you confident that will actually get to the floor? 
for a vote in the House. I'm confident that moving these appropriations bills and continuing the motion and the momentum will breed the kind of faith in each other and goodwill with the American people to, uh, to, keep, to keep the lights on. That's the focus that no one benefits from a government shutdown. Mark Molinaro, New York's 19th district, has been in the room for these leadership and negotiations and will likely stay in the room yeah. <laughs> through Sunday, 12.01 a.m., the deadline for a spending deal to keep the government open, Lilia. All right, Scott McFarlane and Congressman Molinaro, thank you so much.